Alright, so here's a short video on the DH61 igniter. I've been having some problems lately <clears throat> with a no start condition. I, uh, I can smell fuel, so I'm pretty sure that the crank sensor and cam sensor are sending a signal to the computer because otherwise I think I wouldn't have injector pulses, but Please, anybody who knows better, tell me I'm wrong, and that way I could start looking for what's going on. Um, I noticed I had weak spark, so I'm not sure if my coils are cracked or if I have a bad ground somewhere. My first suspicion was that the igniter was bad, and I looked everywhere to try to find how to test these DH61s. Uh, they're a little bit different than the typical Toyota igniter. Because a lot of Toyota engines are uh, four cylinders, and I think that uh, you know this being a six cylinder, some of them also have uh, you know six triggers instead of just three like this one. This is the igniter for the VVTi version of the two JZ, and I also believe the one JZ VVTis also have this waste spark type igniter. And so uh, getting on with a little description of, of this unit here um, I found a crude drawing of the circuit online somewhere and best I can understand it is uh, the T terminals are receiving a 5 volt pulse from the computer in order to bring the corresponding C terminals to ground and fire the coils so I think this is coil 1 coil 2 and coil 3 that's ground for the igniter that is battery volts which is 12 that goes to the tachometer and on some cars it goes to the computer and I believe it translates to a CAN bus tachometer and the IGF terminal which is right here sends a little pulse back to the computer to let it know that <clears throat> a spark has taken place for every time it gets a pulse and I believe if that condition isn't met then the injectors shut down so I looked online for any type of test that someone's already got out there to test these I couldn't find it I did find somebody testing uh, a different type of igniter that basically works the same way and they were using a digital multimeter with the continuity setting to get kind of a little chirp out of it I found that um, I, th I figured that the best way to really get a reaction or something you could see in real time would be to use one of these uh, old school analog meters. So, uh, you know, whenever you get uh, the two ends connected together, you get it to jump like that. That way you don't have to rely on hearing anything. You're seeing that there's definitely, uh, you know, zero re uh, ohms to, with respect to both of those terminals. So what I've got here is a crude little test bench that I made for the igniter. I'm providing 12 volts to the two pins by way of a bunch of little AAA batteries uh, taped in series. So I've got my 12 volts going here. I've got three AAA batteries wired in series to get roughly five volts. And the way that I'm testing everything is I've got the ground to the five volts going to the ground of the igniter. And also it, it's important to point out that the ground terminal is electrically continuous with the case. So the ground is that big chunk that's on the bottom along with the ground lug here. So I've got the meter connected to the ground and I've got the 5 volts connected to the outside ground. I've got the 12 volt battery connected to the pin ground and they're all, you know, electrically the same point according to the meter. And so the theory here is when this igniter is powered up with 12 volts on B plus and ground, when any of the T terminals T1, T2, or T3 receives a 5 volt pulse, the corresponding C terminal 
and ground should have you should see a blip here indicating that when it receives its trigger pulse it's connecting that particular coil to ground and providing a, a path for the coil to make a spark and I will demonstrate that in just a second when I get this all wired up okay so we're gonna test T1 which is the one two three fourth terminal down from the top so T1 is expecting to see a 5 volt pulse from the computer which would in turn connect C1 which is the pin number one to ground which is also ground the case is also ground on both sides so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pulse T1, which is the yellow lead there, to 5 volts. And you can see when I pulse the 5 volts, the meter is jumping, indicating that the two terminals from the meter, which one, if you look, one is connected to co the coil 1 output, the other one is connected to the ground of the igniter and I've got my meter set to ohms uh, 10 times you know it's a very cheap little $13 meter you can buy at Lowe's um, and I found that doing that on C2 I'm sorry um, or rather doing that on T2 and then connecting to C2 will yield the same results and then T3 and C3 and so forth so for all intents and purposes this igniter is good um, so I'm I need to start looking at something else like maybe the ground on the computer or maybe some other wires that got burnt from me turboing it up around town okay so now I've got my T lead hooked up to terminal 2 or T2 and now I've got the meters reference hooked up to C2 and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to give the igniter 12 volts to its input and now I'm going to pulse T2 and observe that the meter jumps when I pulse T2 and it is so it's looking like T1 and T2 are in good shape so I'll do that and now I've got T3 hooked up for the reference and I've got C3 connected to the leads now so I'm gonna pulse that one with the 5 volts and it looks like everything looks good I kind of almost hoped this thing was bad because that would solve my problem, but now I've got more more issues to uh, to check, I guess. So anyway, that's my way to test the DH61 igniter. I hope this helps anybody.